a few naming of ionic compounds. If you have CaCl2, your first job is to write the symbol, or excuse me, write the name of the metal. So if you see the symbol Ca, we just have to write down what Ca is called. Calcium. Your next question would be, does that one need a Roman numeral or not? If I just write calcium, is there multiple kinds of calcium? Or are all calcium ions the same? Well, every single calcium ion has a charge of plus two. We know that based on its location on the periodic table. So no Roman numeral is necessary in this name because we know calcium's always plus two. Now we go on to the nonmetal portion. The nonmetal portion, the decision you have to make there is, is it one type of element or more than one type of element? This one has two CLs, but it's just CL. So if it's one type, then we write the name with an I to ending. So instead of chlorine, we would write chloride. Now a lot of people get nervous and say, don't, don't I have to say calcium dichloride? How would anyone know that I have two chlorides there if I don't put some kind of prefix on it? Well, if you think about what you learned the other day about how to formula write, if I gave you the words calcium chloride, what you would have done is gone to your periodic table, found calcium, and determined that the charge of the calcium ion is plus two. Your next step would have been to find chloride on the periodic table. So chlorine, the element, neutral, but chloride, the ion, has a charge of negative one. You would have taken that positive two and negative one and determined CaCl2. There's no need for any prefixes because you know what the charges are, either from your periodic table or your charge sheet. Prefixes are not necessary. That's probably the biggest mistake, is that people want to put prefixes on everything. So just keep in mind, prefixes are rare. You're only going to find those prefixes in covalent compounds only. And there's a lot more ionic examples out there in the world than there are covalent, just because the periodic table is made up of so many metals. There's so many combinations you could make there. So if you wanna put a prefix on, second guess yourself. That's probably the biggest mistake I see people making. So that's it, there's our answer. What if we had that LiNO3? First thing you'd say is, okay, I gotta write down what Li is called, lithium. Second step is, do I have to write down lithium and a Roman numeral or just lithium? When you look at where lithium is on the periodic table, you know that it has a charge of plus one every single time based on what column it's in. So a Roman numeral isn't necessary, you know what the charge of lithium is going to be. So we just write lithium. Now we need the nonmetal portion. The nonmetal portion of this compound is made up of a few nonmetals. It's got nitrogen and oxygen there. When it's made up of multiple nonmetals, we need our ion sheet to know what to call it. So NO3, we got to find NO3 on that ion sheet. NO3 is over here on the right hand side. Here's our NO3. NO3 is called nitrate. So we go here, nitrate. We just name each ion that's in the ionic compound. 
How about that BACLO3 too? So BA, we'd have to say, what's that called? Barium. Next step, do I need a Roman numeral to go along with that barium? Let's look. Barium is in the second column, so barium's always plus two. No Roman numeral needed because we know what the charge is. So metal part is done. What about the ClO3? Two. There's multiple elements there, so we're going to need to look at our ion sheet to know what to call it. ClO3, 2. When you look on your ion sheet, you might look here and say, I see ClO3, but it doesn't say ClO3, 2. ClO3 is called chlorate. So what do we do? Well, that 2, right here, this 2, is there for charge balancing purposes with your barium. Right? That's why it's there. So it's basically like we have two somethings, and we just have to know what the somethings are called. They're called chlorate ions. Yes, we have two of them. There's no need to say dichlorate because you would know that there's two chlorates there based on the fact that the barium ion is plus two and the chlorate ion is minus one. So when you're doing ionic compound naming, you just name each component. That's made up of barium ions and chlorate ions.